Hey, so a little while ago, we did an AMA and ask me anything on microplastics. Um, and, you know, it was it was a long kind of complex uh, discussion. And at the end, I kind of tried to create a framework um, to help people make sense of this information. And the framework was basically uh, picturing a graph, because, of course, me being who I am, everything comes down to a graph, where on the x-axis, you have um, cost, meaning the actual dollars you would have to spend to mitigate the exposure to microplastics. And within, within that, I also included sort of uh, things that aren't microplastics, but PM 2.5, so uh, particles that are sub 2.5 microns that we can uh, ingest through our lungs that are potentially harmful, in addition to BPAs and phthalates and things like that. So the x-axis would be how much money do you have to spend? And then the y-axis would be how much mitigation do you actually get? And then you could also think of another way to do this, which is how much effort do I need to expend and how much mitigation do I get? And um, you know, just to kind of give you the answer, if you didn't see the AMA, uh, the bottom line is you're never gonna get complete mitigation, even with all the effort in the world and all the dollars spent in the world. So for most of us then, we have to make a decision about how much energy and how much money am I gonna put in to get how much mitigation. And so I just wanted to share with you where I've landed. To be clear, this is not necessarily where you should land. I've made a decision, but I wanted to sort of explain it. Okay, so first off, I decided that there are some pretty low-hanging fruit things I wanted to do. And by the way, a couple of people, when I voiced uh, questions on the podcast about, hey, I really wish I could find a metal water bottle for my bike or a coffee maker that didn't have hot water ever touching plastic, people were quick to send uh, recommendation. So I really appreciate that. Okay, so let's start with the coffee maker. This was a huge source of exposure to me, and it was one of the first things I wanted to mitigate. Now, when I make a French press, it's not a problem because I use this thing. I've been using this forever. So this is just a pure stainless steel French press. It's steel through and through. There's nothing about this that is going to expose hot water to plastic. However, most of the time, if I'm being honest, if I'm being lazy, I'm just using a drip coffee maker. And the problem is most drip coffee makers, if not virtually all of them that I was able to get my, uh, my, my hands on, they all have some plastic, whether it's plastic in the lid of the coffee pot or uh, plastic where the water is coming through a filter. Turns out here is one that does not. So I really, really like this. Now, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it ain't cheap. Um, and we're going to link to where you can find all the products that I ultimately ended up going with. But it's wonderful. It um, filters into a glass carafe and everything where hot water is touching coming out of this uh, is metal. So I like it. And honestly, despite the cost of it, which is a little bit obnoxious, when you consider amortizing it over the course of a year or two, it really becomes de minimis. The next thing that people pointed out to me in my request was plastic water bottles because I'm on my bike all the time, right? So I'm riding my bike at least four times a week and I typically use what most cyclists use, which are, you know, these sorts of uh, water bottles, right? So a, a water bottle that, you know, everybody's used to where you fill it with water. And the truth of the matter is, it's not like we're putting scalding hot water in these things, but let's be honest, if you're out there especially, you know, in a warm day, that water is getting warmer. And then the question is like, hey, how much exposure am I getting? And is there a way to mitigate it? And it turns out there is. So there are at least these two brands of stainless water bottles. And yeah, they're, they're kind of expensive, right? So I, I don't even remember the price. But again, we'll link to these so you can see the, the ones that I've tried. I like them both, by the way. I just wanted to try both of them out. And I have found them both to be great. Okay. I thought about another area where I had um, exposure that was easy to minimize, and that was in the sauna, where I'd always been using a glass bottle uh, for, for the obvious reasons. That one struck me as a no-brainer even years ago. Um, but I used to always take the lid in the sauna with me. Um, so these are the glass bottles that I've always used in the sauna, and they have these little plastic lids on them, and I would just bring the whole thing in the sauna. And it occurred to me, after doing this AMA, Boy, whenever I take a drink in the sauna, this little tip does tend to get pretty hot. And if this thing's getting hot, then the plastic that's sitting on it is also getting hot. So the one simple and silly change I made was I no longer bring the lid in the sauna. So 
when I put these things in the fridge, I just sort of do away with the lid and this thing sort of sits there. So not, not, a, not a monumental change, but, but an obvious one. Okay, so all of those things are relatively low cost and they're one-time costs. And, and again, they, they, they do uh, serve quite a bit of mitigation. I should point out, we had already got rid of plastic uh, food containers and things of that nature. So I, I don't have them here to show you, but, but if you are using plastic food containers, again, relatively minor cost to upgrade to glass, especially if you're gonna be putting hot food in and or warming food up in it. Okay, so the big one and the last one to talk about here is air filtration. It's important to understand that there's there are different standards of air filtration. And once you rise to the level of what's called HEPA filtration, you're, you're, re you're referring to such a fine filter that it's, I believe HEPA cutoff is MERV 18. So you can talk to your HVAC people and say, what is my level of filtration? Most, most homes are probably um, at about a MERV 13. The higher the MERV number, the greater the amount of filtration. And so that was really the last big thing I wanted to do because I work at home so much, meaning I'm spending so much time at home, it seemed like a reasonable investment to make. Well, what I learned was probably what many of you are gonna learn, which is that my um, residential HVAC units are not powerful enough to push air through a MERV 18 or MERV 19 filter. Um, so what we are gonna have to do to make that work is not replace our HVAC, but add units to each of the air conditioning units that basically boosts its power so that we can indeed move to MERV 18 and 19. And again, I've decided to make that decision, uh, to make that choice. Um, it's the single biggest expense I'll probably incur on doing all of this. Um, and because obviously the filter changes themselves are not a particularly big deal. Uh, but nevertheless, that is, is going to be kind of the last step I take. One other point I will make, I should have mentioned this earlier, but I'm taking it for granted because it's a change I made a long time ago, was I did move to reverse osmosis filters for water. Um, so we don't have reverse osmosis flowing through the whole house. We just have a handful of these spigots throughout the house where all the drinking water comes from here. So when I'm filling up water bottles downstairs, I have one of these. When I'm filling up the coffee, it comes out of here. And again, the reverse osmosis does it. So if I were to tell you in order of cost, the most expensive is definitely doing the HEPA filtration throughout the house. Uh, but again, it's a big fixed cost with small variable costs as you replace filters. The second big cost is putting in these. I believe these are about 2,500 or 3,000 a pop. So big fixed costs, very trivial uh, cost after that. I think the next biggest cost was upgrading to this bad boy over here, and then probably doing the glass uh, containers for food, and then all the other stuff, you know, relatively minor one-time costs. So anyway, hope that helps. That's basically how far I decided to go on the cost and effort curve to reach what I believe is the right amount of mitigation. Again, I want to be clear, and I point this out in the AMA, but for those of you that haven't seen it, I don't think the evidence is overwhelming that microplastics are the cause of all the ills in the world. But I just think that the precautionary principle says there's enough smoke to believe that there might be fire. And as such, we should probably take reasonable precautions to minimize our exposure in an effort to improve our health.